also. Do you get this? What is one sample and two sample? So in the one sample, I have a t-test, I have a z-test, and chi-square is not to be included. This is erroneous. Forget about it for some time. And in the t-test, there is something called as an independent t-test, and there is a dependent t-test. Dependent t-test is called an after-before study. You know, in our health center, they asked me to come eight hours without even consuming water or eating. Yesterday, eight or something that you have come, come in the morning, give your blood, then have a sumptuous breakfast, take your medicine, come back again after three hours, again give your blood. We want to check if that insulin or carbophage or whatever diabetic related medicine you take, is it having an impact in trying to control the sugar levels in your blood? So there is something called as fasting and post-lunch. Are you getting these words there? Fasting and post-lunch. Now, if yesterday, some of y'all, many programs you have attended of this kind, if I give you a test about an overview of this four days program, I give you a test. And after four days, again, I conduct a test. Now, this is called before and after. And I show to you your own score. I say, Vijay, uh, four days back, this was your score. After attending your classes, your score has become so. The thing is, the training had an impact on you. Did you get what I'm saying? So the thing is, on the same sample, if I collect data twice, I call it a dependent t-test. But I collect data from him and data from somebody else and I go on that way, it is called an independent t-test. Is that clear? What is dependent? On the same sample, if you collect, twice. And what should be the sample size? Quickly, check your presence of mind. I'm talking about t-test. 1 to 29, below 30. It's called as a small sample. Z-test is of five types. Difference between sample mean and population mean. That is one sample test. Difference between two sample means. Difference between two standard errors. Difference between sample proportion and population proportion. Difference between two sample proportions. So here I'm talking about two sample tests. In that two, again, you talk about independent and paired. In paired, what did you get? T. I said I collect the data from Vijay before and after. I said that my blood test is taken fasting and post-lunch. That is called paired. Do you get it there? And you have independent. I am comparing the score of average score of the girls and average score of the boys about the impact of the training program. Two independent. Are you getting it there? There I have another t-test. Two group t-test. Did I tell girls as one group and boys as one group? Are you getting it there? And the thing is, I think girls are also below 30 and boys are also below 30 in number. It's an ideal test to do t-test. Clear with this there? Know when to use what test. I'm going to give further on that list. Now here when it comes to non-parametric, I made it very clear what is non-parametric. And then you have what is called as a one sample test and a two sample test. And under one sample, you have what is called as chi-square. And you want to check if there is any phenomenon which is happening in a pattern or is it a chance or a random occurrence. For that, I conduct what is called as a run test. You get it? You know, when I was speaking with the railway officials yesterday too, I said for so many years there was not a, such a huge disaster what happened at Balasore in Orissa. But you know, when you see such a kind of a thing in human tragedy, 300 odd people dying, I think people are up with their arms against the railways. And it'll be anybody, you know, even a mother there. She cooks every day well. You don't compliment her. One day the salt or chili is more you find fault with her. Why do you do that? I don't know why I use this example, just to tell you about is there a pattern of occurrence or is it a random occurrence? Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, somebody has got some health issues. The doctor says, figure out what time is it occurring. I mean, I have a friend uh, who trained me on 
how to use uh, audio visual and other things in thailand he's got a problem you know the moment he will consume something which is seafood he gets itches on his skin rashes and all that i mean seafood doesn't suit him there are some people you know for me sulfur drugs don't suit if i take a medicine which has got sulfur in it i get warts on my skin and i tell the doctor ensure that there is no sulfur in it i mean it's my body constitution it may not be the same for everyone i think girls who use cosmetic they said do a test check if there is any irritation it works works if it doesn't work stop using it no matter how expensive is it do you get that so i'm talking about that kind of test you know randomness is like you know is there is a phenomenon you know today morning i had power cuts umpty number of times in the department when i was working for this session and i was trying to figure out i mean all these days it didn't happen why is it happening is it because of the monsoon or tripping somewhere overload a lot of the reasons peak summer also there was no power cut there i am talking about is it a random occurrence or there is a reason that it is happening in a pattern power was getting restored internet was not getting restored and at times the system is on but power is not there i mean funny things were happening i am calling it whether it's a random or there is a pattern i mean simple example to a dentist people go for different problems is there a pattern that everybody is coming only to approve the teeth someone is coming for a crowning problem flossing problem what are they coming for so i'm trying to figure out what is the pattern i mean uh, you look at it uh, like a run test how did people come into the class here i have seen a pattern today maybe three girls came at one time maybe two boys came at one time maybe two boys and one girl came so i'll have this thing which is run a run test what i will do is i'll say women 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 men men www men 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 kind of a thing there so i take each one to be a pattern do you get it there? so i i basically the run test you have to remember is to check the randomness of occurrence of an event i mean why do we have the monsoon missing the season there people said you know i i like that theory they said this cyclone condition which hit gujarat had taken all the moisture and it had carried it to gujarat and that is what has caused the delay in the monsoon it's a reason and people are telling that it is el nino effect if you're reading the papers and you come little bit with science background you understand it better people are using a word which my friend is going to conduct a conference maybe a month or two later you call it climate change you have a pattern right you say from this month to this month is summer this is winter this is rainy somebody else calls it fall or autumn but in rainy season also you get extreme summer kind of conditions so you're calling it climate change if you compare 30 40 years before was it the same condition is it random or there is a pattern is it because of global warming lot of other things can come in so i call that kind of a thing i do run test and here in the two sample i have independent and i have paired in the independent i do a chi square i do what is called as a man with me u test i want everybody to remember this uh, i am not here to figure out that kind of a survey if anyone has come to learn we are very happy with them here now let us say that i have people who are out of oyo year and people who are from oyo year and i want to figure out whether all the students in this room belong to oyo or not i have two sets of data and i want to figure out they belong to the same population or they belong to different population two sets of data so i work out a ranking method and that is what i call it the man with me u test you know how does an f test score over a z test and a t test see i can compare two things at a time i can compare an x and mu x1 with s2 s1 with s2 i can compare small p with capital p or two small p's i can compare at a time i can do only two things but what i am supposed to compare more than two variables i am supposed to compare an x1 with x2 with x3 with xn or i am supposed to compare a 
more than four, three populations that are there. In that case, I go about with using an ANOVA. It's called as test of means. Simultaneously, I go about with checking more than two means, I call it ANOVA. Now, that luxury of using ANOVA, when it comes for non-parametric data, we use what is called as a cruscal valis test. It'll take little time, sounds a little uh, difficult when you pronounce it. K-R-U-S-K-A-L-W-A-L-L-I-S. Cruscal valis test. And remember, it is a non-parametric equivalent of ANOVA. So I still find people applying ANOVA when the data is still uh, non-parametric kind of data. So you, use, you can still use this cruise calvalis. Is there an Excel? Why talk about even SPSS? You must only know how to interpret it. And then you look at this sign test. See, you know, there is a tablet with which it can lower a blood sugar level, blood pressure. So I'll check it for 10 people. If there's an increase, plus sign. If there's a decrease, minus sign. I count how many positives are there, how many negatives are there. And there could be no increase, no decrease. It is zero. I don't take them into consideration. So in these cases, I use what is called as a sign test. Now, please remember this thing there. Uh, people confuse between the symbols. There's another test that is there which